will God protect us from this coronavirus? I, I've heard some reports of uh, uh, pastors who want to keep their churches open, who would like to keep people meeting, uh, thinking that God will protect his own, that as long as we pray and we're faithful, that this coronavirus will not touch us. And I'd kind of like to address that uh, that attitude this morning. Um, there is nothing that I have seen that would give us the indication that this coronavirus is somehow going to pass us by. I, I don't know about you, but I, I haven't encountered any prophets who are telling me to mark my doorposts in blood, to slaughter a lamb, to be prepared to flee to the promised land. In fact, Quite the opposite, I've, I've actually heard a lot of prophets saying that it's time to wash our hands and keep a little bit of social distance. Because the truth is that the rain falls on the good and the evil alike, that we're in this world and we have to cope with whatever the world throws at us. We don't get a special pass simply because we're Christians. And in fact, our, our lot really is to struggle and sweat to survive. This is uh, what we read in Genesis 3. And not only will Christians suffer as the rest of the world does, uh, we, we certainly have all of the world's suffering. We, we worry about food and finances and fortune and famine and all these things that the world worries about, we worry about as well. But we also have a, a special suffering that rests upon us as Christians. Now, we're fortunate in the West uh, that we, we don't face a lot of persecution, but elsewhere in the world, the world doles out to Christians what the world doled out to Christ himself 2,000 years ago. There are people who are uh, persecuted, beaten, killed, discriminated against for their faith. There's a special suffering that Christians bear that the world in general does not. And, and there's, there's also another one that does affect us, certainly in the West. There's another way in which we bear suffering that the world is not necessarily called to on its own. And that is that we're supposed to love our enemies. Jesus told us quite clearly that we're to love everyone. Now that entails some special suffering for sure. When we love somebody, when we love somebody else, we, we genuinely want what's best for them. We generally, we gen, genuinely want them to succeed, to prosper, to be happy, to be content, to be, um, well, to do well, essentially, is what we want. But what that means is that we also very keenly feel the suffering of others. That's called empathy. Uh, certainly anybody who's a parent, you know, when you watch your, your child fall down and scrape their knee, you quite often literally feel the pain. Uh, we, we pick up on that pain for other people. And, and in fact, that, that's really what love is in a lot of ways. It's the, the voluntarily taking on of the suffering of somebody else. That, that really is what love is. And God himself is love. So does that mean that God suffers? And I would say, well, absolutely. There, there's no doubt that uh, God as Jesus, as the incarnate God who came to earth, certainly God in the flesh suffered. There, there's no doubt about that. God the Father suffers the loss of the Son. And the Spirit, the Spirit grieves, the Spirit groans along with all of creation. The, the Spirit suffers as well. So all this to say that if God doesn't get a free pass on suffering, there's certainly no reason for us to expect that we would as well. So what's our comfort then? If we're, if we're just going to suffer like the rest of the world, what would be the point of even being a Christian? Why, why do we follow through with this faith and why do we voluntarily take on extra suffering? Well, I think because we don't, we don't suffer as the rest of the world does. We don't suffer blindly. We don't suffer pointlessly. And most importantly, we don't suffer alone. Because God promises us that we will never be alone. Be content, for he has said that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And that presence, the suffering God who chooses to suffer alongside of us and lend us his strength, that is enough. And that's all we need to get through the day.